All right, Lisa, so one place in my life where I find myself saying, how in the world did I get here? Or things kind of get upside down or in relationships. Because relationships, you're dealing with other people that you can't always control their reactions. So whether it's in my marriage or a friendship or a family relationship or a work relationship, sometimes things can get a little sticky and there's some things I would rather avoid than face head on. Mm -hmm. But actually, how how would you suggest or what's one step that you could say to us about Um, something that we could do to take a step in the right direction to maybe begin to work on those upside down relationships? Well, first of all, I would say if you have a tough relationship in your life, um, that is very normal. Right. (laughs) I mean, I think sometimes we start to feel like, is it just me? Like, is it just, do I just somehow attract difficult relationships, you know? And so I guess just let me let everyone just give a collective sigh. This is normal. Because anytime you have an expectation, it's way up here. Right. And then you have an experience and it's down here. The the ground between those right. two is where disappointment grows wild and free. Right. And anytime you have a relationship, you're going to have that dynamic because you're dealing with two different people, with two different mindsets, right. with two different sets of opinions, you know, all of that. Right. And so one thing I wrote in the book um, that I think really I try to keep in my mind is the downfall of a lot of relationships is directly correlated to conversations that were never had. And um, I know it can be hard. I I know that um, it can feel impossible. Mm -hmm. But here are three things that I try to keep in mind um, when there's tension in a relationship that I know needs to be addressed, but either... I don't want to address it. I'm too tired to address it, or I don't know how to address it. Here are three things I keep in mind. All right. Number one, um, don't shy away from having the conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, You've got to go into the conversation with the right heart and the right mindset, and you've got to be prayed up. But the worst part of of the whole deal is dreading the conversation and putting it off because it will continue to nip at the edges of your conscience. And I often think that's the Holy Spirit prompting me Mm -hmm. and saying, you need to have this conversation, you need to have this conversation. And the dread of it is often way more draining than the conversation itself. Okay, so that's number one thing I try to keep in mind. I need to have the conversation. Number two, I'll never be held accountable for words I don't say. But I will have to live with reaction regret for words that I say that are hurtful or spiteful or vengeful in any way. And so when I think when I'm I'm having the conversation, I try to keep in my mind um, questions to ask rather than opinions to share. And that is help me understand. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting perspective. How did you come to that? Or um, would you mind if I shared my perspective? See, I think some of those kind of questions help us ease into the conversation where we're trying to put ourselves in the other person's shoes and see life a little bit Mm -hmm. more the way that they see it. Because our perspective shapes our reality. Our perception of something often becomes what we think is real. And so if we don't ever try to understand their perception, we can't ever possibly understand their reality. Mm -hmm. And um, and we we may always differ on opinions and something, but... Um, I think asking those questions, why are you know why are you so afraid, mm-hmm. or um, help me understand how that hurt you, right. or how did you feel about that? All those kinds of questions, I think, pave the road for you understanding the other person's mm-hmm. perception, which then you can actually have a conversation to help shape the true reality. Right. The third thing I try to keep in mind is. I love to collect evidence of why I'm right, Mm -hmm. and this gets me in trouble. But the thing is, if you've ever done the Enneagram, I'm a one on the Mm -hmm. Enneagram. So I over-process everything. And because I over-process and overthink everything, I really have walked around this situation 360 degrees. And so before I do something, I am utterly convinced that it's the right thing, or I wouldn't do that, okay? So I know this about myself. So... 
I have to challenge myself with this statement or this question. Lisa, are you trying to, with this conversation, Mm -hmm. are you trying to prove that you're right or are you trying to improve this relationship? Because often you cannot do both at the same time. So I have to lay down all my file folders Mm -hmm. of all the proof of why I'm right. And I have to make my goal here. Let's improve the relationship. It doesn't mean I compromise anything about biblical truth or reality or whatever, but it means I have an empathetic approach rather than an accusatory approach. And I seek to understand the other person. And even if we have to agree to disagree, I want that other person to hang up the phone and say, well, there's one thing I cannot doubt, and that is the fact that Lisa loves me. Right, right. And that's kind of what you said in number two, where you ask them questions instead of just, sometimes we think of a hard conversation as in two different opinions or two sides of the fence where you're just going to be arguing or attacking. Like you said, we might create the conversation in our mind before it happens, and so there's that dread that's taking place before it even happens. And what's your goal? Like, is your goal to improve the relationship? Or is your goal to prove that you're right? And right. for me, I I know that if my goal is to prove how right I am, I'm going to hurt the relationship. But if my goal is to improve the relationship, I might just learn I wasn't right. Right. And what did you say? Like, if the enemy can isolate us, he can influence, he can influence yep. us. And um, sometimes the best thing to do is to go ahead and have that conversation and at least give it a chance because Mm -hmm. so many relationships fail because of those conversations that were never had. And I don't know about you, but I'm just sitting here right now thinking of two people I need to call. I'm just (laughs) feeling convicted by my own own lesson here. Okay, so let's just wrap this up real quick. We need to let Lisa get to the phone and call those people. (laughs) I know it's it's hard. I I don't want to make light of this. I know it's very, very hard. I know it's complicated, and um, I know that there are times that you're having conversations with someone who's hurt you And um, I just want to say, you know, you doing the right thing doesn't validate what they've done wrong, but it does infuse in your heart that um, that wonderful feeling that you are honoring God by trying. And that's really all you can do. 